Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Holly and this is episode two of the designer series, The Bathroom Reno. So when we left off last episode, I did this accent wall behind me here with some flooring from the ReStore. I am gonna be framing that in with some trim, but we're not quite ready for that. We gotta do the paint first. So I picked up a gallon of bare paint in the color chic gray, and I'm really excited to put this on the wall and cover up all this yellow and see how it's gonna look. So before we get into that though, we do have to sand and get the wall ready and sand the holes that I patched in yesterday. So let's get started. Okay, can you shut that YouTube video off? Yeah. It's creepy. I keep just hearing the piano. It's creeping me out. Hey guys, one of my favorite tools, cleaning tool, after when I'm done sanding, is my Ryobi wet dry vac, battery operated. Love this thing. Great for easy cleanup. So the biggest thing for painting um, after you're done sanding is to always make sure that you clean up your area before you paint because you don't want to get any of this dust and stuff in your paint on your walls. So do a big thorough clean before you even think about dipping your paintbrush in the paint. You want to make sure you wipe the walls down, especially if you've had to fill holes with putty. You want to make sure you give them a good wipe so they're nice and clean, just a clean rag. And then as well, if there's any dirty spots on the wall, wipe those up too. And then you'll get, so you don't, I'm going over a big thick dirt clumps on the wall or anything. This bathroom was pretty clean, so um, Kathy just cleaned it, so I'm lucky. We're gonna get ready to start painting here. So I'm gonna do all the trim first. That's the biggest thing is do your trim first before you roll. I'm just gonna use a two and a half inch angled brush. This is a country chic paint brush. We actually sell these here at the store. And I love this brush. It's one of my favorites. I have the one and a half inch as well that I use all the time. But I just, their brushes are great. I've had the same brush. This is a brand new one that I'm opening for this project. But I've had my one and a half inch brush, I'm gonna say at least two and a half years, and I never get any bristles in my paint or anything like that. It washes out so nicely, and I just, I love this brush. Love it, love it, love it. I just bought this paint, so it's good and stirred, oh, uh, just not stirred, shaking up. Ah! We're off to a great start. Love it. like this here because I know my roller is gonna have a hard time getting in there so I just do that part with my brush because it's just easier to do this with the brush and try to squeeze my roller in there especially since I have my accent wall here I don't want to get paint on it like I just did but if I wipe it off quick enough we're okay I don't have to worry about this part right here because I have my trim that's gonna go over that. So I'm just doing this part here where the roller is not gonna be able to reach. And now, when you're doing trim, and if you don't tape, the key thing is, nice and slow and steady wins the race. So brush up, and then across like this. That's how I do it. You don't want blobs of paint near the edge of the trim. This gray is really nice. I think we may be able to get away with one coat. Even though I am not 
painting this piece because a piece of trim is going to go over here. I still want to paint in the corner of the wall just so that when the trim butts up against this wall here, the, uh, there's a nice even paint line there. So I'm going to paint the whole entire corner of the wall here. I don't have to worry about going over too much close to the uh, floorboards. I'm also going to bring the paint out a little bit with my brush because when I use the roller, I don't want to have to bring the roller too close to my accent wall here. So we're going to bring the paint out quite a bit and hence why I'm using the two and a half inch brush so I don't have to, it's not going to take me a dog's age to do this. You know what I don't like? What? Who the heck? Thought it was a good idea to paint. <laughs> Do you see that? Yeah, somebody painted it. Let me zoom in so the viewers can see. Yeah, say, I did that. I did not do that. Not only did they paint it, but they just lightly brushed over it. <laughs> it's like they were trying to do like a dry brushing technique or something <laughs> on the air pen. <laughs> Note to viewers, guys. Don't do that. <laughs> That should be white. We'll see if we can fix it. Maybe I can clean it off or something. Ay ay ay. Okay, you know what I don't love? Anything around the toilet. Oh, it's so gross. Ugh. I'm gonna try to squeeze down in here. Hey guys, here's a neat little hack for you. In between coats, when you want to switch from the, when you're doing the trim with the paintbrush and then you want to switch to rolling, wrap your paintbrush in saran wrap to keep it from going dry and crusty. And then you don't have to What? Get out of here. You were talking to me. No, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to my YouTube followers. You don't have anything constructive to add. <laughs> okay, take two. You wrap your paintbrush in saran wrap. It keeps it from getting dried out and crusty and the paint all drying onto it. You can wash your brush in between the coats, but then I just find your, way, your brush is wet, right? So just wrap it up in saran wrap right? without wrecking the bristles. You wanna keep the bristles naturally and then it'll keep until you're ready to switch back to trim. All right, guys. Let's roll. Pun started on the trim because I have to stain it so I want to measure it cut it and then we're going to uh, stain it and while the stain is drying then we're going to put the second coat on the wall oh, sinks. okay so I'm going to measure across for my top piece and it looks like we have 57 inches Okay, so I'm gonna tell you about the piece of trim that I picked out. So it's a little bit beveled, it has some beveled edges in it. You can see there. This piece of trim was 1280 something. A little bit more than I wanted to spend, but I was willing to go because, go that high because I didn't want a piece of like 
you know, that regular white trim. I wanted something that I could stain, but I also wanted something that wasn't so finished, that it was just more straight and not so like, um, you know, that typical white baseboard trim that you see in houses. I didn't want something like that. And what I had to do was I, I couldn't find another piece of wood for the side pieces that was the same thickness that I liked. So what I got them to do at Home Depot was I actually got them to take one of these, so I bought two of these, and I got them to rip it for me with their saw exactly in half so that I didn't have to come home, get out my table saw and do all that. But I've got my miter saw set up so let's go cut the uh, top piece to 57 inches. Let's go cut our wood. 57 inches. So, what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna stain this piece so that I can get it up on the wall and then I can get my exact measurements for the two side pieces of trim. I mean, I could uh, measure this and then measure that, but I don't wanna get into that. I just wanna stain it, get it up there, and then I'll remeasure again for the side trim. All right guys, so for the uh, trim, I picked up this can of Barathane Wood Stain in the color linen white. I've never tried this linen white stain before so I'm anxious to see how it's gonna look. And I'm going for something, like I want this bathroom to be very light and bright and neutral so I'm anxious to see how this is gonna look on our piece of wood. Another little handy hack, because I'm just so full of hacks today, you guys, is that when you go and you get your stain from the hardware store, wherever you get it, it has been sitting on the shelf for some time, you know? You never know, well, you never know how long it's been sitting on the shelf. So when you get it, take it home, put it on the shelf, and put it the can upside down. So, like this, okay? And just leave it sitting upside down for a bit. And, because what happens with stain is all the uh, color, like the majority of the pigment and stuff sits in the bottom of the can, right? And separates, so if you place it upside down like that, um, until you're ready to use it, it'll hopefully mix itself up and then give it a good shake and then I always get a free little stir stick to give it a good stir before you put it on because what happens is if you don't stir it and then all the colors not fully mixed in you're gonna get stain that's really too light and it's not the true natural color or the true color that's on the um, on the sample board in the hardware store it's a lot whiter than I thought it would be Legit white. Well, we'll work with it. Let's see here. I do not know how I feel about this. Hey, mom. What? Come look at this. The stain. Need your opinion. It's not really doing anything. <laughs> Where are you? Down here. Oh. The stain didn't like really do anything. It's not dark enough? Well, I don't know, like the, it's linen white and that, that's not how it looked on the board at Home Depot. Well, maybe you gotta do a bunch of coats. Or maybe I should mix in a little brown here and there. Cause that's how it looked on the board. It looked like white with like light brown tones in it. Oh, yeah. But what wood did they put it over? That could make the difference. It does make the difference. See, it's like a like a gray almost. Uh huh. Not white. Like this is just like white watered down paint. Did you stir it good? Yeah. Maybe you got to do several coats because it's just being absorbed into the wood. Well, yeah, that's the thing. Maybe it's the wood too, right? Like. Maybe I'll let it sit on it. But I don't really want it to be white though. Anyways. Well, what do you want it to be? I thought it was going to be like a textured, like, creamy color. So what I'm thinking is, is maybe if I put a little bit of brown on and then put the white over top. Mm-hmm. Got any light brown stain? What about the vintage wash effect? Yeah, no. I don't like mixing that with this. Okay. Because that's paint and this is stained. Oh. Like, it's a stained look, but it's still a paint. It's not a stain. Oh, it didn't really do anything either. It's 
too light. It's too light. I need like maybe like a chestnut. How many stains are we gonna put on this board? All right, let's grab another color. going to be the most difficult part. I have to get these two pieces of trim to look somewhat similar to the piece that I just did. And the piece that I just did, I really had no rhyme or reason what I was doing. It just kind of came out. So I'm gonna try and repeat the pattern again. The white stain, the white linen stain, the weathered gray, then the Jacobean, and then the golden oak, and we'll hopefully they'll come out kind of the same. I don't know, we'll see. Okay guys, so we're on the home stretch here. I've got the pieces stained and I think they actually turned out really well. They look pretty similar to the top piece. So I'm gonna just get these attached and then I think we're gonna call it a day. another episode of design series bath and reno episode two is complete I'm very happy with how today's work turned out i had two goals in mind i wanted to paint and i wanted to put up the trim and that all got done so i'm very happy with this i love the trim that i put up i was a little scared there for a bit but it looks amazing got anything you want to add <laughs> <Woo -hoo. laughs> can't handle her okay um, so yeah, everything looks great. Love how the bathroom's coming along nicely. I love the trim. I was, like I said, I was really scared, you guys, that it wasn't gonna, that I kind of wrecked it actually, but um, really happy with it. So again, if you don't wanna miss any episodes, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the bell too so that you get notifications when a new video is posted. Any comments, questions, feel free to leave them below and I'd be more than happy to answer those for you guys. What? What's next week? Or next next episode. time? Oh my god! Yeah. I don't know. The um, cabinet. The cabinet. The cabinet. The mirror. Yes, maybe the cabinet and the mirror. My mom's giving me jobs. Um, yeah, cabinet and mirror. I think is the next good step. So um, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that episode. Because you're gonna decorate this. <laughs> I'm gonna decorate this. <laughs> Get out of here. This is my new jersey. Get out of here. Anyways, try to do an exit maybe with her around. I'm just kidding. Okay, guys, so thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next episode. Bye.